the biggest present under the tree in all of the NFL, to me by far, is going to be Trevor Lawrence. And yet, on Sunday, you had the Jags going into overtime against the Vikings, and you had the Raiders about to choke going up against the Jets if they don't play that zero coverage and if Henry Ruggs doesn't run right by the defensive back and give Derek Carr an opportunity to make a play there, then both of those teams are jostling going back and forth over who gets the right to draft Trevor Lawrence. And this is one of the big challenges. You just heard me talk about this with Sean Merriman. In a lot of sports, we typically do this and talk about it a lot in the NBA because tanking in the NBA is relatively easy. It's why they had to institute the draft lottery Because if you know there's a stud who everybody wants to take as the number one overall pick, well, the last 15 or 20 games of an NBA season, you can tank by just trotting out bad lineups, right? But that's really not very easy to do in the NFL. And so nobody wants to lose. Everybody knows the eye in the sky doesn't lie, right? There's constantly film of whatever you're putting out there. And everybody is trying to do whatever they can to guarantee themselves another contract, whether it's a coach, whether it's a player. And it's so hard to tank because nobody wants to intentionally lose in the NFL. But simultaneously, now maybe Justin Fields is going to be a great NFL quarterback too because it seems pretty clear that those are going to be the first two guys off the board. But simultaneously, it's... So ridiculous to watch your team play down the stretch and be rooting against them because you want to be able to climb up in the overall draft order and because you believe Trevor Lawrence is just that good of a can't-miss prospect. And that if you get him, whether you're Jacksonville or whether you're the Jets, assuming he's willing to sign with you and assuming he doesn't pull a John Elway or an Eli Manning, and say, I refuse to play for this individual particular team, then all of a sudden, one season of awfulness is flipped on its head overnight, and the fact that you had so much futility for an entire season, I guarantee you there were Jets fans jumping for joy when the Raiders hit that touchdown pass, and I guarantee you as well, there were a lot of people out there who were Jacksonville fans that are saying like, man, Why does this team keep playing so hard for Doug Marone? I'll tell you as a Titans fan, I would love if the Jags would not show up at all next week and just go ahead and give us an easy win because we need it. But I think they're trying to win. And and so I don't really buy into the idea that you can tank very easily in the NFL. Now, if you've got a good starting quarterback – and late in the season you decide that guy's got a nagging foot injury or ankle injury or something, you don't play him, that would be basically as close as you can get to intentionally tanking. But Sam Darnold, I thought, played pretty well. It doesn't feel like Mike Glennon is infinitely worse than Gardner Minshew. And so I think what's likely to happen, barring some form of craziness, is the Jets are probably going to keep their pole position and go up and be able to draft Trevor Lawrence number one overall. And then there's a pretty good chance that Justin Fields is going to end up being the overall number two pick. And we got a bunch of guys that I think could end up being first-round picks. Mac Jones, Kyle Trask, Zach Wilson, uh, the kid out of North Dakota State. What's his name? Trevor Lance or something like that, I think, who I haven't watched play a lot. But I know there's an expectation that there's around six guys that could end up being the overall number one uh, uh, pick. Trey Lance, my bad, not Trevor Lance. So what exactly is going to end up happening, we don't know. But I know there are a lot of you out there listening to me right now who are Jets and Jags fans. And you're like, man, I would go ahead and sign the papers to lose out. Go 1-15 in if I'm a Jags fan. Go 0-16 if I'm a Jets fan. Just for the guarantee to be able to go get Trevor Lawrence. And so... We had a crazy, I mean, Dub, were you watching that? Like, I mean, that was pretty insane the way it went on those early games with both of those teams really being in great shape to win. Yeah, I was, uh, let's just say I was invested in the Ra- in the Raiders-Jets game. I had the Raiders yeah. on a teaser, so thank you. Uh, thank you to the Jets for that one. 
But I was watching in the eyes of a Jaguars fan because here you are about to go to overtime. You arguably should have won the game against Minnesota. Yep. And if the Jets would have held on to one to win their game, it's like, oh, we, we literally just won this game for nothing because yes. the Jaguars hold the the quote unquote tiebreak. tiebreaker. Right. So if the Jets finally do end up winning a game and they both the Jets and Jaguars have the same record at the end of the year, then the Jags get the number one pick. So I was just watching through the eyes of a Jaguars fan thinking like, oh my God, of course, the one week the Jets win, we're also going to win to screw it all up. Yeah, I I just think it's a no-brainer that you should want to lose if you're a fan of either of those teams, even within the concept of, oh, you you know, the to, to, to go full on, uh, who was it uh, back in the day? Was it Dennis Green you play to win the game or was that Herm Edwards? I can't even remember who it was now. That was Herm. Uh, Herm Edwards, you play to win the game? Ah, not really. You win the game by getting the opportunity to draft Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. 